Good morning, and thank you. Wonderful introduction. And I'm so glad to be on the line with all of my Australian, or I shouldn't say Australasian friends again. Um, <clears throat> it's uh, quite cold for you and, and quite warm for me up here in Texas. So <laughs> it's just weird how that works. Well, <clears throat> I think it's appropriate, especially for this time of the year, for us to be talking about Immunostart. Uh, this is just the right time of the year for all of you folks to be thinking about it. You will learn during the course of this training call that uh, there are other aspects of Immunostart which can make it beneficial really on a daily basis. So not just during the sniffle season, okay? So there's a lot more to it. So what I'm going to do, uh, for those of you who have heard me uh, do these calls before, the purpose of these calls is to try and not just educate you, but to try and prepare you for all of those things that just come up. I mean, you're, you're talking to a friend, uh, you're talking to a brand new contact, and you are trying to explain the products to them, and they say, yeah, but, I read this on the internet, yeah, but, uh, so-and-so says their product is better, or I don't understand that word, what does it mean? That kind of thing. So what we do during these calls is we try and address the most frequently asked questions, and some of those are uh, answers for what turn out to be objections sometimes that are easy to overcome if you are properly educated. So that's really our point this morning, and to build confidence for all of you in another one of Manatech's really great technologies. You know, there's a lot of bonuses in Manatech products. And certainly, there is a bonus here with Immunostart in that it isn't just one product. Really, realistically, it's four products within one product. Four different products, which easily they could be sold separately. And in fact, there are companies that do sell these four different items separately as separate products. And the great value here with Immunostart is that they are all combined in the same product. So really, we're going to be talking about four different products within a product. Now, of course, the thing that most people think about when you say Immunostart, they think about colostrum. And many of our associates, unfortunately, who've not been able to uh, be at one of my product trainings or to be on one of these training calls, they think that, oh yeah, it's just a colostrum product. Well, Manatech doesn't really like to make Me Too products. Uh, and, and if I had my way, it would be uh, an 11th commandment that we would simply never make a Me Too product under any conditions for any reason. Because I want us to always be unique. And I think our technologies truly are unique in the industry. And after testing more than 6,000 products and having more than 40 years in this industry, I think I'm pretty well qualified to make that statement that most of our technologies are extraordinary. Well, colostrum. Well, if you look at other websites or if you look at other product literature where they're selling a colostrum product, they will typically say something like this. Colostrum is first milk taken in the first 72 hours after birth. Well, that's not correct. You see, colostrum isn't first milk. It's not milk at all. Colostrum is not a milk product. Now, it is secreted from the mammary gland as milk is. But colostrum is actually made in the blood. So it's really not a milk product. Now, might there be some uh, dairy residue with colostrum? And the answer would be yes, there will be a little bit of lactose, a very, very small amount of lactose, if your colostrum is pure. And by the way, colostrum occurs in the first, in, a, in the pure form, okay, in its pure form, it occurs in the first six hours after birth, and then between six hours and 72 hours, you have increasing amounts of milk because actual milk does not come from the mammary gland uh, until you are at about six hours plus. 
So this is very, very important for the newborn uh, because the colostrum contains something called IgG. Now, I'm going to use a number of scientific terms, and those of you who are, who are familiar with my trainings, you know that I'll first give you the science, and then I will explain it to you in very plain, simple language so that you can explain it to virtually anyone, regardless of their level of education. That can make you more successful in helping others with our products. So, IgG, immunoglobulin G. Hmm. All right, what does that mean? Well, you have five categories of immunoglobulins. And now you I know some of you are thinking, oh my gosh, what's an immunoglobulin? All right. You have five categories of immunoglobulins in your immune system. So your immune system is much more than, you know, most people they get their blood work from their doctor and they see their they look at their white count as an example. I say, oh, those are immune cells. Well, yes. White cells are immune cells, but your immune system is far, far more complicated than that. It is astoundingly complicated. So we start with the five categories of the immune system. Each of these are, again, called immunoglobulins, and each one has different properties. That's why your body has five of them. Uh, and there's a little bit of redundancy in one of the immunoglobulins, and that's a good thing. Uh, but generally speaking, each of the five categories, you have immunoglobulin A, like alpha, G, like golf, M, like Mary, D, like delta, and E, like echo. So immunoglobulins A, G, M, D, and E. Now, we have a competitor. Well, they're not much of a competitor, really, but they think they're a competitor, and they sell a colostrum product, which is much less effective than ours, significantly less. And they tell everybody it's all about immunoglobulin A. And in fact, when a number of their uh, senior people left that company to come to Manatech, and I talked to them about, because they said, tell us about your colostrum product. And I said, well, it's much more than a colostrum product, but... Uh, but I'll explain it to you. And, they, and, the, and I said, the, the key is immunoglobulin G. And uh, their senior leader said to me, oh, you mean immunoglobulin A, because that's what they market at that company. And I said, no, I mean exactly what I said, immunoglobulin G. You see, immunoglobulin A is good. It's important. And you have two types of immunoglobulin A. Uh, one is called serum IgA, and the other is called secretory IgA. Now, IgA has antiviral properties. That's good. That's a very good thing. It's an important thing. And you will find your IgA, the secretory IgA, you will find it in non-vascular fluids. So saliva and bile and synovial fluid in your joints, um, uh, intestinal secretions, respiratory tract secretions, that kind of thing, okay? So IgA is important, and it's not that this uh, so-called competitor doesn't offer a value with the IgA. Of course they do. But, you know, at Manatech, we pride ourselves on being the leaders in science. So we looked at the five categories, and we said, well, the most important one for overall immune effect is going to be IgG, immunoglobulin G. Because immunoglobulin G is not only the most prevalent form of immunoglobulin in your entire body, it's actually found not limited to certain fluids like IgA is. It's found in every single type of fluid in your body, every single type. And so, I mean, it's even in mucous membrane. It, it's, it's everywhere. Now, what does that tell you? You know, the body doesn't have accidents. I know that some people think it does, but, but it doesn't. Everything in the body has purpose. Everything in the body has meaning. And... IgG is the most prevalent immunoglobulin because it's the most important immunoglobulin.
It has antiviral properties like IgA, but it also has antibacterial properties unlike IgA. So IgG is already more important. Literally, if you're going to make a dietary supplement product, or in some countries they'll say food supplement product, depending on the regulations, but if you're going to make an immune support product, you want to make a product that supplies you with IgG, not IgA, because IgG is going to give you a much, much broader spectrum of function. But that's not all. There is much more to IgG. There is uh, an ancient Greek word, opson. Opson in ancient Greek refers to, and yeah, I like ancient languages. Okay, give me a break here. All right. So it refers to the more savory dish of a meal. Well, from that word, because in science we use either Greek or Latin words as our roots to explain things, we have something that goes on in your body called antibody opsonization. Now, what does that mean? Well, opsonization is the process by which a pathogen is marked for ingestion and eliminated by a phagocyte. Oh gosh, what's a phagocyte? Okay, think of that, that uh, children's video game from years ago called Pac-Man. Well, think of Pac-Man as a phagocyte. And think of everything in your body that is a problem for you. The little Pac-Men, the phagocytes, are wanting to go after them. Well, part of the problem, of course, is they have to know what to go after. So what happens is the opsonin binds to the membrane of the target cell so that the phagocyte or the Pac-Man recognizes that it's a bad guy and eats it up, just munches it right up. So if you want your immune system to function more efficiently when you have either bacterial or viral challenges, you want opsonization to be as efficient as possible so those little Pac-Man cells can go to town and just eat to their heart's content. Think of a phagocyte like it's a voracious Pac-Man, okay? And so they're looking for a cell that has opsin bound to it. How does it get there? Through IgG, not through the other immunoglobulins, especially not through IgA. So this is why we want to concentrate on IgG. Now, why am I spending so much time on this? Because if you look at your label, and you know, every country has its its positive and negatives about labeling. Some countries just make me absolutely crazy with their labeling uh, because what's on the label is not always exactly what we want to explain to you. But the rules are the rules in each country. Now in uh, Australasia, you're using the rules from the uh, Australian TGA and the Australian TGA wants to list things a certain way and that's okay. Uh, the problem is, of course, that the average consumer often doesn't understand what the stuff is when they uh, find things listed in a more scientific fashion. Uh, and so that's why we need this explanation today. So you're going to look on your label of Immunistart, and one of the things that you're going to see uh, is IgG. And in fact, you're going to see, not only are you going to see that, but you're also on your label. In fact, I think I'll, Sinead sent me a, a couple of pictures of your labels. So I'm just going to make sure that I read it to you exactly as it's stated. Yeah, so on your label, it says, features lactoferrin and immunoglobulin G, parentheses IgG, to support normal, healthy immune function. Okay. So... On your label, it specifically says that, where in, in the United States, it does not say that because the average person doesn't have a clue what the heck an immunoglobulin is or what IgG is. Uh, so now you understand what that is, and, and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about how important this is for you.
Now, lactoferrin, well, IgG occurs naturally in colostrum. And the more pure the colostrum is, so in other words, the less milk and the more colostrum by volume, and that's what I mean when I'm talking about purity. Uh, so, you know, forget that stuff. We're taking this out to 72 hours. We want to harvest in six hours so that we can have the purest form of colostrum. Okay. So in that colostrum, you have naturally occurring IgG. That's why colostrum is so important for a newborn because they're literally every fluid, every part of the body that has any amount of moisture in it is going to need that IgG. That's how important it is, unlike the other immunoglobulins. So it's super, super important in that respect. Now, also within colostrum, there is something called lactoferrin, very tiny amounts. So what we did for this product is we have a second product within the product, which is called lactoferrin. We have actually extracted pure lactoferrin from the colostrum to further concentrate the IgG because lactoferrin is almost entirely IgG. So this raises your IgG level even higher in this product, making it even more effective to support your immune system. So now we're looking at two products inside of the product. Now, if you're not already excited about the product, maybe you need to take some Ambrotose to uh, pop up that brain function. Because right now, if I stopped right here and said nothing else, we have got some pretty exciting stuff to talk about with Immunostart, just with the colostrum, what I've explained about IgG versus other products out there. And of course, the fact that we have concentrated lactoferrin to give you even higher levels of IgG, which is pretty darn exciting for your immune system. So again, antiviral activity, yes, like IgA, but also antibacterial activity and that all important opsonization so that your little Pac-Man cells can go after the bad guys and munch them all up, digest them, okay? And that is just super, super important for your immune system. Also, IgG is not only found all over the body, but I am constantly asked by people, is it safe for children? IgG is the only immunoglobulin that can cross the placental barrier. I want you to think about this for a minute, my friends. Again, there are no accidents in the human body. I will fight anybody about that one. Anyone who wants to tell me that there's all this randomness in the human body. No, there couldn't be or it wouldn't be functioning and surviving in all the stresses that we have uh, it, eon after eon. I mean, it, it, there's no accidents here. You need to protect that baby inside of the placenta. You need to protect it. The body will do everything it can to protect it. It does not want anything which is not safe to pass through the placental barrier. Well, IgG does pass through the placental barrier. So obviously, if it's safe for a placenta, I'll bet you it's safe for kids. Okay? I mean, it's just, just logic here, folks. All right? So is it safe? Yeah. Now, you have to be concerned with children in that little kids tend to inhale their food instead of chewing it, as you know, which is why children are, you know, periodically there's kids brought into the emergency room who've gotten a piece of candy stuck in their throat or something like that because kids tend to not chew their food correctly. Now you should, these tablets should be chewed thoroughly. This is important. Chew them thoroughly, no matter what your age is. And if you're going to give this to uh, one of your children and you are not confident that they are going to chew the tablet 
thoroughly before swallowing, then just crush the tablet up, folks. Just It's a pretty big tablet. It's a big one. It has to be because there's literally four products in every tablet. So crush that tablet up into a powder and then take that powder and either give them the powder or mix the powder into food or drink. And, and that's really the best way to do it. But, you know, choke warning here, folks. So just be aware that sometimes kids just inhale stuff, okay? And let's not take that chance. So for your kids, pulverize the tablet and then put it into a food or drink, and that way they can still have the benefits of it. All right, so I think we've done enough on IgG. I think everybody's got it, and I think uh, by this point, everybody probably has the basics on the immunoglobulins as well. Now, let's talk about the other products. I talked a little bit about the lactoferrin already, which concentrates IgG even further. So this is an exceptional IgG immune support product, really exceptional. But then we go to a third product. And in fact, this is something which is sold as an individual product all over the world for immune support. In fact, there are a lot of people who think that this one item is all they need to support their bodies during sniffle season. Okay? Now, on your label, they have identified this by the Latin botanical name. Uh, so, Lentinula edodes. Now, you look at this, and the average person is going to say, what the heck is that? That doesn't even sound like food. Well, in fact, it is. It is the Latin name for an edible mushroom, which is commonly known as shiitake mushroom. Shiitake mushroom has been used for has been used for thousands of years throughout East Asia and parts of India. So it is well known in ancient Oriental medicine, ancient Chinese medicine, ancient Japanese medicine, uh, even ancient Ayurvedic medicine, which is the medicine practiced in ancient India, and still practiced today, by the way, in India. So shiitake mushroom is an edible mushroom very uh, well known in East Asia. In fact, uh, for those of you who've had uh, miso soup in Japan or perhaps at a Japanese restaurant, there's also some shiitake mushroom in miso soup. Okay. Well, what does shiitake mushroom do? Well, throughout ancient history, the ancient practitioners knew that that mushroom helped people get well when they weren't well and it helped to accelerate their progress. But of course, there was no science then in ancient times. No one knew uh, what was actually going on. They didn't know anything about white cells and phagocytes, and that. they didn't know anything about that stuff. All they knew is that when someone wasn't well, if you gave them shiitake mushroom, it usually helped them to get better faster. What we do know from scientific study is that shiitake mushroom contains glyconutrients or glycans, uh, as they're known in science. Glyconutrients is the uh, commercial term. Glycan is a scientific term. And uh, the shiitake mushroom has these glyconutrients that are known to be immunomodulatory. Now, what does that mean? Well, most people, they think, well, my immune system's weak. It needs to be stimulated. Or they think, uh, my immune system's overactive, so it needs to be suppressed. Now, their doctors may prescribe an immunosuppressant drug for those people who are overactive in their immune system and may prescribe a, an immunostimulant drug for those people who have low immune systems. Well, what your body wants to do always your body doesn't want to stimulate your immune system. It doesn't want to suppress your immune system. It wants to modulate your immune system. So when we say immunomodulation versus saying suppression or stimulation, when we say immunomodulation, what we're talking about is achieving balance or what in science is called homeostasis. So balance. Balance is the goal. 
your immune system doesn't want to be too high or too low. It wants to be at the perfect balance. You get there through immunomodulation. So another frequently asked question that comes up all the time about uh, immune products, because almost everybody thinks about an immune product in terms of stimulation. Almost everyone does. And, and I know this from 40 years of talking to people uh, that this is just the way people think. Well, if it helps your immune system, it must be a stimulant. Therefore, it must be bad for me because, uh, because my immune system is overactive. Okay, so everyone listen carefully now. Shiitake mushroom is not an immunostimulant. It's not an immunosuppressant. It is immunomodulatory. Now, I was looking at a, a study recently from the Indian Journal of Biochemistry and Biophysiology, uh, and it's appropriate that they would be studying this because uh, journals in India and in China are still very open to ancient medicine and natural medicine, much more so than the journals in the so-called Western countries. So with this in mind, you want to look at some of these journals when they, they do good science, but they're open to doing science on things that are natural versus things that are synthetic, drugs, okay? And as I'm looking at this, it talks about the immunomodulatory property of shiitake mushroom, very positive thing. But something else that's very, very interesting about shiitake mushroom. Now, if you were to look at, and which unfortunately makes me crazy, because people will tend to go on the internet and they Google stuff, right? Often they don't understand what they're reading, and then they're, then they're emailing me with questions because they didn't understand what they read. So hopefully you'll understand now as, as I explain this. So shiitake mushroom, which again is known as l edodes or lentinula edodes, shiitake mushroom not only is immunomodulatory, but it also has some very extraordinary properties as it relates to oxidation in the body. Now, this is very, very interesting to me. Uh, what it does is it helps to increase the production of glutathione peroxidase. Now, this is not a claim that Manatech makes. This is just from a study that I'm quoting, uh, and I think this is fascinating. Because glutathione, of course, is made naturally by the human body, and you can, you can take any number of uh, combinations of natural products to help your body make more glutathione. But I think that one of the, surely one of the benefits of shiitake mushroom must be in the way it works in terms of uh, glutathione peroxidase. So... Now you have three products within one product. And once again, if you were to take a look at, you go to the health food store, you go onto websites, you're going to see shiitake mushroom pretty widely recommended for immune support. And Sinead, we've got folks in the background that need to be muted out, if we can. Uh, not sure what's going on with that, but okay, back to the shiitake mushroom, how you will find this in uh, in health food stores and, uh, and on the internet very commonly for immune support. And you'll just find tons of stuff. Some of it's accurate and some of it's not, uh, as is the case with almost anything on the internet. Um, and especially from the commercial websites that are just selling products, sometimes they're not really giving you the most accurate rendition uh, of the available information. So I'm being kind. <laughs> anyway, so with this in mind, um, this is a product which is commonly sold. Now, we have actually made this into a concentrate. So the shiitake mushroom, and, and this is another FAQ that comes up, because people are looking at the number of milligrams and very often don't understand how this works. Your standard shiitake mushroom product is simply shiitake mushroom powder. That's all it is, Okay. What we've done is we've concentrated this to the point where our shiitake mushroom uh, in this product is equivalent to about 400 milligrams of standard shiitake mushroom product. 
Uh, so literally, this really is uh, a product within this product. All right, so now you've got three products in here. This is pretty cool. What a great value. You know, we've got our IgG support and uh, immunomodulation, and, uh, and we have our, 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 uh, the potential for glutathione support. Okay, again, that's not a Manatech claim, but that is something that I've mentioned from this study. Well, the fourth product is the citrus pectin. Now, some of you may have been watching some of the uh, webinars I've done recently and stuff that's gone on YouTube from uh, various different product launches and stuff I did at Manifest and so on. And I've talked a fair amount about pectin recently. Uh, as an example, uh, at Manifest, and I'm sorry that not everyone could have been there, of course, uh, but uh, I spoke for the very first time in Manitech history. No one has ever spoken about this before. Uh, and I spoke about the aloe pectin, which is unique to our manipole, which really is a product within that product. Uh, so like you have two products in that product, really, uh, in our manipole product. And and of course, pectin has some extraordinary properties. Well, before I explain to you what the properties are, I probably should tell you what pectin is, because a lot of people will say, well, what the heck is that? Where does it come from? Okay, fair questions. Pectin is, uh, is an anionic polysaccharide. Oh my God, what does that mean? Just relax for a minute, I'll explain it to you. But first, let's do pectin at the most basic level. If you were to unpeel an orange or a lime or a lemon or, or any kind of citrus fruit, okay, if you unpeel an orange, you will see strands of fiber on the inside of that orange peel. Now, of course, humans are not designed to digest orange peels, okay? We're designed to digest the oranges and we discard the peel. But inside of those fibers, it has been discovered are anionic, uh, anionic polysaccharides called pectin. So what we have to do is we have to modify that pectin so that you can actually digest and absorb it because you're not going to actually digest and absorb an orange peel. So what we do is we open up those strands of fiber to release the polysaccharide called pectin from the strands of fiber. Now, that makes it, now by modifying it in that way, that makes it into a powder that you can actually digest and utilize. Okay, I used the term anionic, uh, anionic polysaccharide. And what does that mean? Okay, anionic means an ion with a net negative charge. Now, don't freak out, this is very, very simple. It's very simple. So what this means is an ion that has more electrons than protons, for those of you who are science geeks and you, and you want to know that stuff. Now, you've probably, as a kid, you probably played with magnets. Uh, at least it was common in the U.S. when I was a kid. And, of course, uh, the, uh, the opposite poles attract and the like poles repel. Okay. Well, this is the way it works in electrochemistry as well. So in electrolysis, anions migrate to the positively charged anode. In other words, opposites attract. Okay? So in simple terms, what an anionic polysaccharide does is it attracts positive ions. Why is this a good thing? Well, heavy metals like lead and mercury, and Americans say aluminum, and you folks probably say aluminum, but you know what I'm talking about. So those three metals are positively charged. Opposite poles attract. So this is why pectin is often sold to support the body's ability to remove heavy metals because the negative, negatively charged ion attracts and binds itself 
to the positively charged ion so that it can then be taken through the body. Now, if you don't think that's cool, I mean, <laughs> this, is, this is just a very, very cool product. The stuff that's in this product is amazing. The, the, the four, your four uh, different products within the product. So think of what you can do with this. You are getting a, a, a tremendous, tremendously broad spectrum support from the uh, IgG, which is highly concentrated through our extremely high quality colostrum and the lactoferrin, pure lactoferrin, that's been pulled out and concentrated on top of that. So you've got all this IgG to literally help throughout your body with both antiviral and antibacterial properties, and it has that opsonization factor so that a bad guy cell can be tagged, so the phagocyte Pac-Man cell can find it and gobble it up. And, and of course, thereby helping your immune system to be healthier, okay? And of course, the benefits of the shiitake mushroom, the immunomodulatory benefits, as well as I cited from a particular study, again, this is not a Manatech claim, but uh, from this particular study that cited uh, that they observed a rise in glutathione peroxidase uh, when using shiitake mushroom powder. And they just use a standard shiitake mushroom powder, not something that was amazingly concentrated or anything like that. Pretty standard stuff. And of course, the value of the pectin as well. So you have tremendous value in this product. Now make sure that you chew the tablet thoroughly. But what about the lactose that's in there? Because there is a little bit of lactose, very small amount of lactose. It is a tiny fraction of the amount of lactose that, according to the World Health Organization, would be necessary to give you a lactose intolerance reaction. Now, a lot of people are not familiar with the numbers with this, the World Health Organization does actually look at common problems like lactose intolerance. They have tested it. They have established norms, uh, and they have established the levels at which uh, reactions can occur for individuals who are lactose intolerant. Now, that level is just amazingly higher than what you will find in Immunistart. So much so that it is really highly, highly unlikely that anyone will have a lactose reaction. I mean, you're, you're talking about perhaps uh, less than a tenth of the amount that's necessary to cause a lactose intolerance reaction. There's no way to filter out all the lactose with current scientific equipment. It simply can't be done. Uh, so we can't tell you that it's lactose-free. It isn't. Uh, but the numbers are really, really small, ridiculously small. And, and again, they are well below the amounts that the World Health Organization says can cause a lactose intolerance reaction. So if that's a concern, it shouldn't be one for you. Now, what's the worst thing that can happen if you have a lactose intolerance reaction? Well, that's not the same. Uh, an intolerance is not the same as an allergy. An allergy, a food allergy, can be very, very serious, and you must not ever trifle with that. Uh, an intolerance is an entirely different thing. An intolerance gives you annoying, irritating symptoms, but not life-threatening symptoms. So it's a, it's a very different thing. And so you may want to check that out even if you think you are lactose intolerant, you might want to give it a shot anyway. Okay, And if you do the uh, two tablets a day and you chew them thoroughly, you should be fine, even if you are lactose intolerant. Okay, So I think we've got a really good summary 
of Immunostart. This is really the right time of year for you. This is a product that you can certainly use in conjunction with Ambrotos. No problem with that at all. And especially at this time of year for you folks uh, down under, um, you may you may be really wanting to fortify your immune systems anyway at this time of the year. So um, using Immunostart with Ambrotose or Immunostart with Ambrotose and even Manipal is certainly still okay. Personally, I think every household should have a bottle of Immunostart in it all year long because stuff happens. You know, people get exposed to stuff. People do have... Uh, various types of immune challenges throughout the year, not just in the winter months. And so you might just want to keep a bottle of Immunostart in your house uh, all year long. I just think it's a really, really good idea. And for those of you who are parents, uh, and for those of you who are grandparents, and you remember being parents uh, of little children, you know, little kids just always have the sniffles, don't they? I mean, it's just amazing. Uh, it, children go to school, and there's always kids at school that are sick. And then your child's coming home sick. It almost doesn't even matter what time of the year it is. It just happens all the time. Because children have not yet learned proper sanitary habits in terms of washing their hands and, uh, you know, all that sort of thing. So with that, and so that, that happens. And it's just a really good idea to have that immune start there. Once again, for the children, if you have any concern uh, about them not chewing that tablet thoroughly, then don't take a chance. Just take that tablet, pulverize it, just crush it into a powder, mix it into food or drink. It has a taste that most kids like, uh, and there's always going to be somebody out there that says, I hate the taste of that. Okay, but you can't make, you can't, there's no way to make a taste that makes everybody happy. But most, most of the kids are, are, are pretty good with a taste of this. Uh, so the last FAQ that comes up on, on this particular product, uh, a lot of our associates around the world, of course, will make comparisons between the US version of any product and the version of the product that sometimes is changed for their markets, not because we want to, but because the government regulations in their country uh, force us to make a change. So. Uh, in your Immunostart, there is a difference, which I think is a very positive difference, by the way. I think it's a benefit for you. Um, the difference between the Australasian Immunostart and the uh, U.S. Immunostart is that the U.S. Immunostart has a special form of beta-glucan in it, and yours doesn't. However, the U.S. doesn't have shiitake mushroom in it, and I've just spent considerable time explaining why the shiitake mushroom is so important, what the values are. The purpose of the beta-glucan in the U.S. version is to activate immune receptors in your mouth before you swallow the tablet. So it was designed as a lozenge. Uh, I'm not sure if you use that term in Australasia or not, but something that you're supposed to suck on rather than chew. That's how it was originally designed. Um, but if you chew the tablet thoroughly, you're going to get everything into your gut that you need, and, and, it, and it reacts very nicely, by the way, with the glyconutrients in Ambrotose. So you've, you've got, a real, got some real benefit there. Can you suck them too? Somebody has just asked. So rather than chewing them, can you suck them till they dissolve? Is there any issues? Yes. No, none at all. Mm -hmm. um, somebody has asked about swallowing them whole and if GI juices destroy it. Uh, it's, it's a bad idea to swallow it whole. Okay. Um, you want to have it mixed with the enzymes in your mouth before you swallow it. The reason for, uh, the directions, I think even on your label, I think it says chew tablet thoroughly. And, um, cause I don't have the picture of your label up again right now, but, um, yeah. uh, but I think it says that, and that's because we want that material to mix with certain enzymes in your saliva. Mm -hmm. If you swallow it whole, you're going to miss out part of the benefit. Plus, that's a tough tablet to swallow. I mean, that, that's a big one. I mean, that's one that you could easily get stuck trying to swallow that baby. Yeah. Now, will, will your digestive juices destroy it? No. In fact, uh, the, the way it's designed, when it interacts with 
uh, enzymes first in your mouth, then the enzymes in your gut, as well as stomach acid. Stomach acid will have no negative effect on it. So it, it's good all the way down. 